Welcome back my dear light bulbs to another review of Tokyo Ghoul Re. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the light bulb army. So let's get this review started. The first point I want to talk about is once again Kaneki death flags that Wamutsuki said in this chapter, which I'm not going to reiterate, but she said something, well I'm going to reiterate, that she's, if Kaneki comes she's going to kill him. So I want to expand on that and my thinking. Right now, Kaneki is an SS class ghoul, meaning he's very strong. He almost up there, almost, almost up there with the Owl and Etel and all of them, but still he's not up there. But still, that's a very, very high rank for a ghoul. And at this moment, Kaneki has bags under his eyes, bloodshot eyes. He's very tired. He's restless. He's really thinking all too much because he's trying to make the ghoul survive since this is like a period of extermination for the ghouls and persecution not saying the other periods were not like this but this is even worse i'm gonna make the analogies right now furuta is like adolf hitler basically when when adolf hitler killed the jews like furuta that's the comparison that you can make you can see it the science is really evident like he's really harsh and brutal and stuff but Furuta is also a hypocrite because he's a ghoul himself. And that's what makes me mad the most. I'm going to talk about that later on in the review. So yeah, Kaneki right now, he's probably starving or probably really, really hungry like the rest of the ghouls. Because Kaneki's not just going to be eating by himself or whatever. He looks skinny. He looks like mal malnourished basically. And at this point in the series, even though he's an SS class ghoul, he's, he's very weakened. And in this state, I may say that he's an S-class ghoul. Just an S-class because he's not 100% Kaneki. He's not Kaneki with the... Uh, he's not Black Reaper Kaneki or any of those Kanekis. Or the Kaneki that fought uh, my mom in the past. Because he's just weakened right now. And he's going to go above ground because Toka did not find him in his room and stuff. And probably try to rescue Yuriko for Toka's sake. Because he knows that that is kind of Toka's best friend and only human friend um in the world basically and Yuriko never knew that Toka was a ghoul so that's that the second point I want to talk about back to Furuta is that Furuta the comparison to Adolf Hitler and the thing is now he like making the laws even more harsher if you harbor a ghoul or anything like that then you get the death sentence like we saw in the letter about Yuriko's, Yuriko's trial and stuff which Toko was holding up. And I'm just like, that is just messed up because once again, the comparison... Sui Ishida is an amazing writer. He's an amazing writer. The comparison to the real world, he just brings it in right into Tokyo Ghoul, the verse. And it's like, if you harbor Jews during the World War II in Germany or wherever the Nazis were around... They just killed you right on the spot. There was no trial or anything. They just like knocked on your door, broke your door down, found them, and then just killed you or took you as a prisoner. I don't know which one. I think they did kill you. And that is just really messed up. Um, but Ishida bringing the real world into his manga, real, wor real wor world events into his manga shows the signification of an amazing writer. Now, the third point I want to talk about is the expected delivery date for Toko's baby is December 12th. And now with that, um, I probably by the time I'm making this review and it goes up, December 12th is probably a very special day or whatever. If you got up to this far in my review, can you please um, tell me what what event is December 12th, if it's very prevalent in the Tokyo Ghoul verse or whatever. Uh, before I made this video, I forgot to check when is Kaneki and Toko's birthday. Maybe it's Kaneki's birthday or something like that, but I don't really know. But yeah, Kaneki knows Toko's having a baby and maybe he's doing this for her. Maybe he's going to save Yuriko for Toko's sake. So Toko's sanity, you know, is not. So Toko doesn't become depressed is what I'm trying to say. Um, I think that's the major things I wanted to talk about. The last thing is that Toka might just go above ground and... No, no, one last thing. If Toka goes above ground and tries to challenge Mutsuki and stuff like that, then that will be... I'm... Please do not kill the baby, Sui Ishida. Please. Oh my goodness. This is like the major concern for a lot of us. 
Kaneki and, Clo and Tokar are so close now. Um, there was a little scene in the cell and stuff. And it's just like... We see Death Flags for Kaneki. But we also could see Death Flags for Toka herself. Which in turn kills the baby. Because Yuriko is her best friend. Like I said earlier in the review. And then she goes up. And that's it. And... I know this is a saving manga, meaning we're, we're not supposed to get happy endings all the time. So, either Kaneki's going to die, or Toka's going to die. And, to tell you the truth, if I were to write who will die in this manga, if I was Sui Ishida, even though Kaneki has tremendous character development, characterization, and went through a lot... Um, I think Kaneki should sacrifice his life so his newborn with Toka could live on. Like, that would just be... It wouldn't be the best ending, but that would be a better ending than Toka dying and Kaneki dying as well. Because I could also see that where they both die together and I do not want that to be the case. And I lied. I got one more point. I want Furuta to get exposed for what he is, a ghoul, in front of the whole CCG. Maybe Kaneki and his group are pushing him to the edge, about to kill him. And Furuta just unveils his Kagune and stuff like that. Like, I really do want to see that because that just will break the structure of the CCG. And not only break the structure of the CCG, break the loyalty of that Uri has for the CCG, that Mutsuki has for the CCG, that many blind followers have for the CCG, where they just, oh, I see a ghoul, time to exterminate. No, no mercy, whatever. I don't care about talking like Amon was in the past in part one and stuff. Like, I really want Furuta just to get revealed for the evil he is in reality and the hypocrite he is because he is a ghoul trying to exterminate his own race. So... Overall, I'm going to give this chapter a 7.5 out of 10. I was going to give it an 8, but it wasn't that good of a chapter. It was just a little bit more foreshadowing for things that might happen. Um, he, Sui Ishida actually does a lot of foreshadowing in his manga, but that foreshadowing doesn't always come true. But there was a lot of foreshadowing in this chapter. And I'm happy that Kaneki knows that he has a kid now, not that he has a baby on the way, not a kid. And yeah. Overall, great chapter and I'm out. Peace.